Hello, welcome back. And today we're going to be working with the material balance in a unit operation. So the general balance equation states that uh, inputs minus outputs plus production minus consumption equals the accumulation. And this mass balance is a result of the mass conservation principle. There are two different types of balance. One is the differential balance, which is uh, when the states are happening in an instant of time, it's a picture of a continuous process and it uses rates, kilograms per second or kilograms per hour or something like that. The integral balance used in batch processes is what happens in two instants of time. You are going to input something, something is going to start to, 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 to pass, to happen, and then the output is the exit. And it uses amounts of mass instead of, of rates. When you talk about the steady state process, is the process in the steady state uh, when the, the accumulation term cancels out. So inputs plus production equals outputs plus consumption. But if there is no chemical reaction, then there is no production nor consumption, which means that inputs is going to be equal to outputs. Whatever enters has to go out in steady state and no chemical reaction. And in order to solve the balance, the first thing that you need to do is to read a problem and perform a diagram of the process. You have to draw the process diagram with the unit operation and its inputs and outputs. State known and unknown variables, choose a basis of calculation. If the stream flow is given, then you have to use that stream. But if it is not given, you have to assume one of the streams with the known composition. And that's going to be the basis of calculation. And you have to turn everything to mole or mass basis with the same units and in the same uh, system. If you are going to work with kilograms, everything has to be in kilograms. But if you have to work in pounds, everything has to be in pounds. So if you have this process, which states that a feed stream is flowing into a separator and the stream contains, uh, and it's given the composition 0.20 kilograms of uh, sodium hydroxide and the rest is water, the distillate flows in such a way that 40% of the input will go out in the overhead and the rest at the bottom. So the overhead is has a composition of 0.125 kilograms of hydroxide. So the first thing that you need to do is to draw the, the, the unit process, the, the, the unit operation. And this might be seen as a block, right? And there is going to be streams that are going to get into, that's one of them. And uh, it's flowing uh, 0.20 of NaOH and the rest is water, so 0.80. Those have to sum up one, right? You will have two outputs, one at the head and one at the bottom. And then you have to put the extra information. Point 125 of uh, sodium hydroxide at the top and the rest water. But you also can have, and this information is not given, the 100 kilograms per second should be our basis of calculation. That, that's a proposal. The basis of calculation could actually be this stream as well, because you have all of that. Uh, you know, don't know this top kilograms per second, these bottom kilograms per second, and you don't know the composition at the bottom. Um, probably that's what we, is being asked, the composition at the bottom. Now that you have your diagram complete, then you have to perform the independent material balances equations. And you have three types of equations, the relations, which is any relation given at the statement of the problem. For example, the output is one third of the input, the input of component A, A is three times the input of component B. In this one, let's say it's given that the distillate flows in such a way that 40% of the input will go out. So that's a relationship. And also you have the overall balance. Whatever enters 100 kilograms has to go out at the top part of it, at the bottom other part. And the per component minus one, because the sum of the balances of the components will yield to the overall balance. So that is not going to be independent. So you have here, let's say, uh, two components. So one of them is going to be used 
it could be sodium hydroxide or water. You can perform a degrees of freedom analysis, which is the number of unknowns plus the independent reactions. Here we don't have those, but we will continue later on with those. Minus the number of independence balance equations, minus the number of useful auxiliary relations. So if the number of degrees of freedom is zero, the, the system is completely defined and you can solve it. If it is larger than zero, then it is underdefined, has no solution unless you start to performing some suppositions. And if it is less than zero, then the system is overdefined and some equations might not be fulfilled. So in this case, where we have this system, the degrees uh, of freedom will have five unknowns if we don't have this basis of, of calculation. So let's say that here we don't have any number. So we have one, two, three, four, five and unknowns. And we don't have reactions here. The number of independence balance, independent balance equation is two of them. One is the overall and the other one is by one component. It could be hydroxide, uh, the sodium hydroxide, or it could be water, but th those are two. And their useful auxiliary relations are two of them. The first one is this one, the fact that the distillate flows in such a way that 40% of the input will go out. But we have other that the sum of these two has to yield to one. And if we do five minus four, it will yield to one. So we need a supposition. And the supposition that we're taking here is that we're going to start with 100 kilograms per second, such that with that, we can get the zero degrees of freedom, which will mean that this can be solved. And after that, we can have the, the, the equations. So relation 40% of the input will go out of in the overhead, will state that 0.40 of what its input is equal to T. That's the overhead, okay, the top. And then you can solve for T, which is 40 kilograms per second. That's the 40% of the 100. And in the overall balance, whatever gets in has to go out, inputs equals outputs. So this 100 has to be top plus bottom. And this is 40 plus B. So you can get B equals 60 kilograms per second. And we also have uh, to solve for this too, right? So we can do uh, the balance by component uh, sodium hydroxide, which states that the composition of hydroxide at the inlet time equals the one at the outlets, right? So you have to do composition times the stream. So this yields to 20 kilograms per second, 0.20 times 100, 20 kilograms per second. And here you can have 0.125 times 40, plus x, which you don't know, times 60, will yield to a composition of 0.25 here. And at the very end, you can do component H2O, water. And this is only if you want to check that everything is consistent. And it will yield that whatever enters, 80 has to go out. Part will go out here, part will go out at the bottom. And another concept that is very useful is the one of the tie component. A substance that enters in one inlet and leaves in one outlet. Uh, you know the compositions and it passes and change through the process unit. Uh, in a chemical reaction, we can say it is an inert gas, but it also uh, can be a one that is easy. So for this example, an ethanol water mixture is to be mixed with 100 grams of pure water. The original mixture is to 50 grams and contains 0 0.30 ki kilograms of ethanol, ethanol uh, per kilogram in the mixture, and the rest is water. What is the final composition in the mixture? So you're mixing here. So you have two streams, one that is 100 grams of water, one that is 250, of 30% ethanol, the rest is water. You are going to mix them and you will have here, um, let's say the, um, the, the final product, right? And this is grams, so this might be a batch process. 
and an overall balance will state that whatever enters has to go out. So it enters 100 to 50, and this, well, we will get out 350 grams, right? And if we do the balance by this ethanol, which is the tight component, why this is the tight component? Because it enters at one stream and exits at one stream. And it is easier than if we do it for water where we have more streams. So then we will have 0.30 times 250 is going to be equal to the composition or the fraction here at, uh, at the exit times the 350. And solving for this guy, we will get a composition of 0.214. Uh, this is kilograms of ethanol per kilogram of the mixture. And the rest is going to be water. 